Previously on MasterChef, two simple ingredients. Peanut butter and jelly. I got this for sure. Put America's best home cooks. Get my workout in today. In a jam. You didn't get peanut butter or jelly. Can I borrow some peanut butter? I gotta use it. Can I borrow some peanut butter? My apron's already coming off. And Sarah. The only person that's gonna like it is Shelly. We feel that you're checked out. Sent goodbye to the MasterChef kitchen. Tonight. Bring it on, Cowboys. Cowbell! The top 10. That is hot. Hurry up, hurry up. Are in for the roughest ride. They just turned those. Don't worry about it, I got it. Of their culinary lives. Get them on the plate. Faster, here. Dude, back off. While some. Fruit tart. Gallop to victory. A masterpiece. Others are crushed by the dreaded pressure test. It will not happen! miles north of the MasterChef kitchen, the remaining 10 home cooks have arrived on a beautiful California ranch no for a team competition where the stakes have never been higher. We are in the middle of no man's land, but it's beautiful. The sky is blue, the grass goes on and on and on. There's mountains on every side. It's nothing I've ever seen in Brooklyn. Wow. Christina driving this awesome truck just makes me so excited. I mean, girl power, drive that truck. Oh, oh guys. <laughs> Let's go. Wait. I can't believe what the judges are wearing. Gordon Ramsay was made to wear blue jeans. Right, how are we? Great. 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 Now, there are just 10 of you left, the top 10 of MasterChef. Woo! Today, you will split into two teams of five, and you will have to feed 101 very hungry cowboys from this range. And they will be the judges of today's competition. They will vote to decide which team ends up safe and which team is headed for the slaughterhouse otherwise known as the MasterChef's dreaded pressure test. I'm the only one out of all these 10 competitors that has not won a team challenge. Claudia Curse is over. I'm winning today. There's just one pro team that can truly satisfy these hungry cowboys, steaks. Each team will have to make a steak dish with two sides and one sauce for 101 cowboys. It is time to lasso up and pick your teams. Pethel and Katrina. Now, you guys had the winning dishes in the last challenge, so please step on up. I'm pretty sure none of the cowboys want to be fed by the vegetarian. My confidence for this challenge is not really there. So, Pethel, since you had the best dish overall in the last challenge, you get the first pick. Okay. But you are actually not going to have first pick for your team. Okay. You're going to be picking the team for Katrina. Oh. And then Katrina will be picking the team for you. Okay. Basically, it's reverse world. If you're picked first, it's actually like getting picked last. So it's, you know, reverse kickball. Don't be picked first in this challenge. So this person I'm picking for Katrina's team is someone that I think is a great worker, but it's just sometimes on team challenges, it's a matter of consistency. And I'm gonna give Katrina Claudia. Claudia, wow. Hethel actually thinks I'm a poor competitor or that I'm not an asset to her team. I guess it's my job to prove her wrong. Right, Katrina. I think I could work with any of these home cooks. I just personally think that I can work with other people better. And that person is? Shelly. Shelly. I was on a losing team with Katrina, so I'd rather be with somebody where it's a fresh start and we can only go up. OK, second pick. This person, lately, they've been semi-negative about things, and I kind of don't want that on my team. I want positive, happy thoughts. Tommy. Tommy. Katrina, now you're picking for Hethel again. Olivia. Olivia, welcome to the red team. Thank you. OK, Hethel, third pick for Katrina. Nick. 
Wow, interesting. Nick, welcome to the blue team. Let's go. Are you crazy? Have you lost your mind? We need Nick on the red team. We need a man's man. It's charcoals and fire and cows. We got Heppo, who's a vegetarian. I'm a pescatarian. Olivia clearly only eats salads, and then she sends Nick to the other side. What's the plan? Right, Katrina. Christopher. Christopher. Wow. Thank you. So, Derek and Stephen, the last two picks, which basically means you are the strongest two picks. Derek, in a perfect world, what team would you like to be on now? I would love to work side by side with Katrina. Uh, interesting. Heather, you're picking both teams now. Derek said he wants to work for Katrina, and I'm going to give it to you, basically. Wow. I really want Steven. He knows how to set up a protein station, and I completely trust that Steven will get the steak right. Excellent. Steven, please pick up your apron. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, both of you, please go and join your teams. Looking at my team, I'm just like, oh. I'm feeling 100% confident that we're going to win this challenge. There's one more very important decision that needs to be made. Both teams have to make a steak dish, but both teams won't be using the same steak. One team will be cooking with the most amazing New York strip, one of the best cuts of steak anywhere. The other team will be cooking with a delicious hanger steak. That's a tough choice. A choice that, Heather, you will have to make because you had the best dish in the previous challenge. Take a minute with your team and decide. Between the New York steak and hanger steak, I don't know what either one is. I'm the wrong person to make this choice. Everybody knows New York, right? New York, yes. Then maybe the New York's the way to go. But the hanger has a better flavor. I'm hoping for that New York strip, but there's no chance we would be getting that gift. So I'm going to choose the hanger steak for my team to cook today. All right. Holy cow. You just gave me an extra pot of gold. Both teams will have just 60 minutes to create a delicious steak entree, two sides, and a sauce for the 101 cowboys and ranchers that are all about to descend upon this plate. Your 60 minutes will start the second that we get into the kitchens. Both teams ready? Yes, ready. All right, let's go. Woo! Let's go. <laughs> I go to my parents' ranch every weekend where we have horses and cattle and goats and chickens, and this is just a little piece of home. Welcome to the kitchens. Nice. Here we go. Close nice. down, please. Right, let's go. Take your time, take your time. OK, into your kitchens. Your time starts now. Let's go. Both teams must rapidly devise a menu and a game plan to feed 101 hungry cowboys and cowgirls. All right, guys. So, Stephen, you will make the meat. We're going to make a potato salad. Yes. We're going to do chimichurri. Okay. Why don't we use the chimichurri as, like, the sauce on the salad? Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm going to throw this out there. I know you guys want to do a chimichurri, but I really think we should do a barbecue sauce. This is a rancher. They want something sweet. Barbecue sauce is one of those things where, like, it's, it's like expected. It, but... it takes time. The menu makes no sense. I know we should do a barbecue sauce. We're on a ranch for crying out loud. So we're going to grill zucchini. Zucchini? Come on now. These are people with rough hands. They touch cat all day, but we giving them zucchini? I don't know where this is going to go, but I hope it all makes sense at the end. Go Red Team. Let's go. go. Red team. Let's, yeah. go. Yeah. Let's go. Over on the blue team, Captain Katrina is thinking outside of the box for their menu. Okay. I want to do a New York strip with a beef demi glace. I can easily make a sauce. OK, so whiskey, yeah. onions, and maybe a little bit of heat. Not a lot. I think we should do some white sweet potato mash. Excellent. Then we're going to blanch green beans. I can do the green beans and mushrooms and bacon. OK, great. I know what a cowboy would normally like, but then I'm thinking maybe they want something fancy but rustic. Blue team on three. Right. One, two, two three. three, blue team. So, Heffel, tough one. I mean, she's playing at a disadvantage just by being vegetarian, and she's kind of on her back heel here. Do you guys do equal parts salt and pepper for the rub? Two parts salt, half part pepper. Got it. But she ruled the Beef Wellington yeah. Challenge. And she yeah. has a strong second in yeah. command with Steven. See, I know, but that's the saving grace in Right. That. Now, do you think Katrina will be able to lead yes. and communicate? Yeah, I mean, she's very honest. She's brutally honest. She's right. not scared of anybody. And also, she tells the truth. These can be sliced to save time. Tommy, did you hear me? Yeah. Say yes to me. Yeah, come on. OK. Over here now. I'm on my way. The Red Team Blue Team, they understand the market, who they're cooking for, smart sides without mm -hmm. being too flash, a stunning sauce, and you've got the proteins to nail it. Yep. 
25 steak naan. Right, Heather, what's the menu? What are you doing? We're doing a hanger steak with yes. a chimichurri. We're yep. doing a warm potato salad mm -hmm. and grilled veggies with zucchini, onion, and peppers. Wow. When I think about grilled vegetables, and I'll tell the yeah. whole red team this, I think about ladies who lunch. Yep. I just don't think these cowboys are looking forward to a grilled vegetable side. And it's pretty time consuming. Yeah. Have a quick meeting, rethink this, and get practical. Okay. Please? Yes. Okay, I need to figure out what we're gonna do. I'm under pressure. I have 50 people calling my name. Hethel. Hethel, each plate gets four potatoes so we keep it uniform. Um. I have Gordon Ramsay yelling at me in one ear. Hethel, we're feeding the cowboys, not the cows. My brain is going blank. I don't know what to do. There's too much going on. In this team challenge, the home cooks must prepare steak and sides for 101 ranchers and cowboys. Let's put on steak. With the start of service quickly approaching, the red team has to rethink their grilled zucchini idea. Line up the zucchini that we have already cut. Where are they? It's right here. I'm just going to saute it up, even though they're all different shapes and ridiculous. Is that what you want? That's it. That's it. We don't have time to break down any other vegetable. We already have the zucchini cup. We just need to go with it. Add some flavor to it. Make it a little manly. Fine. OK. As Hethel and her red team rush to finish their vegetable side, the blue team is full steam ahead on Captain Katrina's unusual menu. That's good. Yeah, right? Katrina. Right, menu. We are doing a New York strip yes. with a whiskey demi-glaze. I do think the cowboys want to see a demi-glaze. It's not a wedding reception. It's just the wrong sauce for the wrong location. Sure. Talk to me about the sides. What are you doing? Green beans and bacon uh -huh. with a sweet potato mash. Right, sweet potato mash. It's OK, but it's not everyone's favorite. Oh. They're cowboys. They want a little bit of oomph. Oh. Get some heat in there. Great. Yeah? My plan is to take ideas from the judges, communicate it to my team, and change it like that. Derek, I want you back on sweet potatoes. I want some cayenne and um, smoked paprika in there. OK, Claudia. Yes. We don't want a demi-glaze. We want something heat. I could do fire roasted red pepper sauce. That's perfect. OK, good. While the blue team try to toughen up their side dishes, Captain Hethel is struggling to manage the red team. Chris, get on the grill ASAP. Move to steak right now? Please. All right. We need Chris to help with the vegetables and she sends Chris to the grill. It makes no sense. No. What, are you, what are you gonna do? I don't know. I don't know either. Not so excited about working with Steven. He likes to take control and usurp and just go overboard. And I think he just doesn't like me. Why don't you, um... Yes, tell me, talk to Stan. me. Stan, yeah, okay. Yeah, what do you want? I'll do whatever you want. I'm here for you. What okay, you uh, just, uh, just like do that for a couple seconds. Christopher is absolutely right in thinking that I don't want his help because he's always like this, talking, talking, talking. Yeah, that one's that was good. good. Well, it's not done, Hello? but... Oh, I, no, I just turned those. I just I, turned those. Chris, don't worry about it. I got it. The first thing he touched was wrong. Christopher should go and scrub some dishes or something. I don't have time to teach people how to cook meat. You know what? You guys, we need to you stop need to arguing. As the tension between Christopher and Steven boils over on the red team. Over on the blue team. I can't see. The heat of the 700 degree charcoal grill is getting the best of Derek and Nick. It's like sunglasses or something, it's crazy. I'm trying to find the rhythm of these charcoal grills and it feels like my skin is just burning off. I think I burnt my eyelid. That is hot, dude. Nick and I have to make sure every steak that comes off this grill is cooked perfectly. And this is either going to be our defining moment or our biggest crash. Ah. Red team, blue team, the cowboys are arriving. Guys, look over the hill. They're coming to you. Here comes this cavalry of cowboys, and I'm just totally getting into their outfits. I got to get some chaps with some French, honey. This way, guys, right over here. Red team, blue team, five minutes until we start serving our cowboys. Hey, Olivia, yes. crank out that veg. I got two working. We have five minutes till plating, and we don't even have the zucchini done yet because we waited way too long in between to make a decision. And the pans that we're going to cook these zucchini in take 
a lot more than five minutes to heat up. This isn't hot at all. You need help with the zucchini. I'm going to help you, OK? It's going to be fine. How are you doing, boys? Beautiful. Look at that. Sexy. I want a rest time in between. Remember that. Absolutely. And we're going to do assembly line. You hear this? Yes. This is a perfect way to work. Katrina starting on starch, Tommy on veg, and then me finishing off with their steak and sauce. Bring it on, cowboys. Ciao, Bell. That's the dinner, Bell. Ladies and gentlemen, lunch is served. Please make your way to the red team and the blue team kitchen. Enjoy. For service today, the red team has made a hanger steak with sauteed zucchini, warm potato salad, and a chimichurri sauce. The blue team is serving a New York strip steak with white sweet potato mash, green beans, and a fire-roasted red pepper sauce. Good job, Claudia. The winner of today's challenge will be determined by the 101 cowboys and cowgirls who will taste food from both teams and vote for the dish they prefer. Stay coming up for you. Just want to make sure it's perfect. Once they arrive at the service table, each guest must receive a completed plate. If not, they will be forced to move on empty handed, and the vote will be forfeited. Ethel, it's service time. Where's the veg? Give me some veg, please. Unfortunately, it's not completely cooked. Hurry up, hurry up, please. This is like half done. Come on. Let's go. Get us in there. Get us in there. Give it to me. Service starts, and we have no veggie. And out the gate, we're putting out empty plates. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so, so sorry. sorry. I'm so sorry. Hazel, come here. We're losing votes by the minute. There's no zucchini. We have a line of 100 cowboys waiting for our food. We need to get this together now. There's no systems here, OK? It looks bad. Hurry up. We're losing votes by the minute, okay. and there's no zucchini. Is this going to be like a running joke? How many vegetarians does it take to put out some vegetables? I don't know, but it's getting pretty crazy right now. Hello. Yes? Veg in two. OK. It's been midnight by the time we get these guys served. Everyone decides that they can't deal with the vegetable because it's, like, too scary. So I'm totally in my zone just trying to saute ridiculous watery zucchini because I don't want to lose. OK, this is all the veg I have right now. Got it. We're good now. Thank you all for joining us today. We greatly appreciate your patience while we work through this. As the red team hustles to push out plates and get back in the game, the blue team is breezing through their service. French green beans. These are French Harry yeah. Colbert. We have a great system in place, and it's the smoothest service that I could think of. I just want this momentum to keep on going. Here you go, New York strip steak. Yep. You hear that? They love our color, Nick. Yeah. A couple of Italian boys on the grill, huh? <laughs> Out in the dining area, Graham checks in with the Cowboys to see which team's food they prefer. You guys have had two steaks now, OK? One from the red team, one from the blue team. Which one are we leaning toward? Oh, you weren't able to get the red steak. Oh, I was all geared up for two steaks. Right. Steven, steaks, please. I'm going as fast as I can. Well, I've never met a steak I didn't like, but I like the blue team better. It was more tender, and I love the red sauce on there. We've got a New York strip steak here for you. The sauce for the red team was great. Potatoes were good. The zucchini was awesome. Probably the best I've ever had. More veg coming. While the cowboys and cowgirls begin to vote for their favorite dishes, back in the blue team's kitchen, the stress of service is getting to Derek. Put a blue plate behind, blue plate behind. Come okay, on. give me a second. Where's the blue plate here? Blue plate. Come on, get him on there. Get him on the plate. Yeah. Faster, here. Guys. What? What's your Derek? Oh, she Derek. has a blue plate. Derek, calm down, please. Give him back. Derek's being bullheaded. He's telling me what to do. Dude, back off. When it's your show, let me know. But today's my day. How are we doing on stage? Coming in hot, guys. As Captain Katrina keeps the blue team firmly in line. Enjoy, sir. The red team comfortably adapts to the pace of service. Thank you guys so much. Hope you enjoy. Me and Shelly are working real well together, and everyone seems to be giving us compliments. This red team steak is number one. Here you go, sir. Enjoy. Last 10 guests, guys. The best 10. Let's go. 
Beast mode, baby. The red team steak was really perfectly done, in my opinion, and the sauce was awesome. The blue team's meat was very flavorful. Nick, you're killing it with these steaks. The chimichurri sauce for the red team was excellent. I like the blue plate a lot better. It had a wider variety of flavors that really popped on each one of the items. Last guess, my team. Let's go. There you go, sir. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you for your patience. All right, y'all bring it in. Come on. Doing amazing Let's bring job. it in. I feel good about the cook. However, I'm a little nervous about the veggie situation. So we'll see what the wrenches and the cowboys have to say. What do the judges always tell us? The star of the dish is the protein. Captain. I'm so proud of my team. We serve some damn good food. And I feel so confident in what we did that I just know we're going to win. Good job, guys. With service now complete, the last few cowboys and ranchers are casting their votes, which will determine the winner of today's team challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, you all cast your votes. Only one team can be saved from elimination. The other team will be facing the dreaded pressure test. I can't say our steak was perfect because I didn't eat it, but from what my team said, I feel good about this. The winning team that will be safe from elimination. We've got this in the bag. Our plates look delicious. My sauce was on point. I'm just hoping and praying. With a landslide, 50 votes in front. Congratulations goes to... The blue team, ladies and gentlemen. Well done, blue team. We came and conquered, and we stuck together, and I'm so proud. Blue team, congratulations. Go and say hello to our cowboys and cowgirls. Well done. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Red team, you all face the dreaded pressure test. Please, carefully jump down and start cleaning both kitchens. I feel disappointed, and the fact that I failed so bad is killing me inside. I think God is just continuously punishing me for cooking beef. And I let my team down. I didn't give them a direction. I didn't guide them. I didn't do what a leader should do. Instead, I buckled. Sorry, guys. Walking into the pressure test, I feel nervous. The judges thought I would be a good leader, and the fact that I failed so bad is killing me inside. Line up, please, guys. Thank you. Yesterday, you all cooked a delicious steak dish for 101 hungry cowboys and ranchers. Blue team galloped to victory. Red team, you had a very rough ride. Unfortunately, red team, you lost by a huge margin. 50 votes. And that's why you're standing in front of us, about to face the dreaded pressure test. There are five of you standing in front of us, but not all of you are going to have to cook in tonight's pressure test. One of you will be safe. The decision of which one of you will be saved tonight comes down to the blue team. <laughs> yes. Blue team. You all have two minutes to discuss amongst yourselves, then you come up with one name from these five home cooks that will not have to face tonight's dreaded pressure test. Your two minutes to decide starts now. The blue team, they weren't in our kitchen. They don't know who really deserves it. So I think the blue team could go one of three ways. My initial thought is save somebody 
weak, like the strong battle each other. They could choose someone who's weaker so that they could possibly eliminate them later on. She's won a challenge before. She's been a good captain. Someone who's strong because in the event we have more team challenges, you're going to want a strong cook on your side. Honestly, I'm kind of on the fence. I'm good with either choice. Or someone who has an emotional bond with them all. So unanimous. 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 It's, it's a toss-up. Time up, blue team, please. Thank you. Katrina, make your way down here, please. Where you'll hand this one apron to the home cook that is going to be safe tonight. I tried really hard to make good decisions yesterday, and I don't think that everybody else did. Off you go. I will not go home over this. Olivia, you are now safe. Please make your way up onto the balcony. Thank, Thank you. you. The blue team came together decided on Olivia because as simple as it is, Olivia's a hell of a team player, and we like having her around. All right. Yesterday, you were down and dirty serving rustic food to cowboys. But now, it's time to face something much more elegant. Tonight's pressure test is a beautiful, magnificent fruit tart. <laughs> you wouldn't see this beauty served on a cattle ranch. There is so much technique involved. The pastry shell, it has to be baked just right so that it holds the other elements. Then comes the custard. A great custard is about texture and flavor. And then, of course, the crowning glory, the glazed fruit. Remember, you have to choose the right kind of fruit, fruit that is going to go well together. A grapefruit tart is a work of art to look at, and it tastes like a masterpiece. Christopher, Shelley, Stephen, that fruit tart is all that stands between you and elimination. It's time for all of you to head to your stations. Am I excited that's dessert and baking? Yeah, because that's what I love. I'm a baker. In front of you, you all have the exact same ingredients to make your fruit tarts. You'll also have access to a limited pantry full of every fruit imaginable. You can make any kind of fruit tart you want. There are no limits on your interpretation of this classic dessert. You will have 90 minutes to make us an incredible fruit tart, or else you could be the one going home. Is everybody ready? Yes, yes, chef. The time starts now. Ninety minutes to perfect the perfect fruit tart. That's not easy. Come on. Well, a fruit tart is visually perfect, yep. and it starts with a perfectly baked tart shell. Yep. You have to get the ratio of butter, flour, sugar, salt just right. You have to weigh the crust down to make sure that crust is evenly baked. Mm -hmm. And that pastry cream needs to just be a nice vanilla scented cream. And it needs to hold its shape when you go to take Jesus. that slice yeah. out. And from there, it's all about the fruit. You have to be savvy about that fruit looking like little gems perfectly placed on the top. And then my favorite part of the fruit tart is the glaze that goes on top, because that's what really makes the fruit pop. Uh, so what I'm doing with fruit tart is a uh, variation on a, a summer Collins cocktail that I make when I'm working as the bar manager of a restaurant. So it's going to be a lemon pastry cream with strawberries, blueberries, and a, a mint glaze on top. I don't mind Olivia being saved at all. Obviously, I'm a threat, so I'm just putting my best foot forward. I'm glad you didn't save me. Why? So I don't have to feel bad when I send your ass home. <laughs> the blue team chose to save Olivia. Interesting choice, Aaron. in my opinion. For them, the most important thing is that Stephen is still down here. And I don't know if he's got the finesse to perfect a fruit tart. I'm worried about Shelly. I'm worried she's going to get some really? really crazy fruit action from, yeah. you know, the Caribbean influence. Yep. We've seen Christopher perfect these fruit tarts on a much smaller scale. Right. Can he elevate that to something bigger than a nine-inch flame? I think he can. Come on. 
right, Shelly, tell me about your tart. What sort of flavors are you working with? You know, I want to go mango with coconut because that's me all day. Yeah. But I'm nervous about the cutting. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go berries and chocolate because I love oh, chocolate and smart. berries. I agree. And to be honest, if I saw you do mango and coconut, I'd be like, no, I get it, Shelly, but I've seen those flavors bingo, from you. Bingo. So I think this is a really nice flavor combination that shows a little bit more reach. It looks good. And if it's not velvety smooth, pass it through a sieve. Okay. There's still time. Ethel, how are we doing? Good. I'm making a cardamom crème with berries on top. OK. What's your glaze? My glaze is a raspberry with a little bit of rose. Like rose water? Yeah. Not much. Yeah, I barely get any coming through. You don't but get it's any? Fine. OK. Now, there's one home cook tonight that hasn't been in a pressure test yet. Steven? How do you think he works under pressure? Uh, when it comes to baking, I saw him during the pie challenge where he kind of got flustered and wasn't so sure about himself, which is fine by me because just based on competition, I want him out of here. All right, good luck. Thank you. I'm choking on nervousness. Right, Stephen, how are you feeling? I feel pretty good. Your first pressure test. There's only four of you here. One in four chance of going home. Um, seriously, look at me in the eyes. Are you pissed that you're not on the balcony? Because you wanted that pass, didn't you? No. <laughs> no, I stand by who I am. Period. Bollocks. Do I still have to whisper? No, bollocks, no bollocks here. I will lose every day as opposed to going and taking a victory with Tommy. No, it will not happen. I will lose every day as opposed to going and taking a victory with Tommy. No, it will not happen. Why do you have to say my name? I know, I'm sarcastic, I'm crass, but I care, you know, and, and I want to execute this. I don't give a what you are. I just want you to cook your heart out and produce a tart. I'm producing it right now, baby, okay? This is going to be a good tart. Make it the best tart. It's going to be the best. I'm back there. Here's I some, told you, he's cracking up the pressure. He is agitated. <laughs> I don't like it when those <laughs> wheels stop turning. I want the air to go. Steve is so angry. Slow down, slow down. Do not panic. Hethel is reenacting what she did yesterday. Panicking beyond belief. There's something about baking challenges with home cooks that have proven their ability with baking. They lose the focus. Right. Oh, you all right? Yeah, I'm just being an idiot. Nine minutes to go, guys. By now, the tart should be out, and you start that construction process. OK, yeah, let's cook through. Get this done now. Look at how watery Why? his filling is. Oh. Adding too much lemon juice made it. It kills it. Last five minutes. Good job, Pethel. Totally fabulous. Steven is now taking the tart out of the... Oh, look at that kind of fat. <laughs> 19 seconds to go. Coming up to the last minute, guys. Have to be down on the front bench. I've never seen Steven show signs of weakness or defeat. And yet, here he is on the floor crying because his pastry just broke in two. Really bad for Steven. All the better for us. 20 seconds to go. Chris, you got to really get on the gas, dude. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And stop, guys. Hands in the air. Well done, all of you. This pressure test was one of the hardest things I've done in my life. It doesn't matter how good you are, when it comes time for pressure test, everything you think you know, you're wrong. All right, first up, Steven. I know I'm going to get reamed for the crack crust. I know I'm going to get reamed for the loose pastry cream. But my tart is going to taste good. All right, Steven, what do we have? Blueberry tart with some apricot glaze, a little bit of lemon zest, and just a little bit of squeezed kumquat juice for the acid. Mm. Mm -hmm. How did you find your first pressure test? Mm, sickening. Sickening because of the pressure and the. Just how I feel right now. Okay. Right. I think it 
face value. Mm -hmm. I wish there was more than just blueberries in mm -hmm. the tart. The big thing that you really can't obviously ignore is where some of this tart shell broke apart and some of the pastry cream is starting to come out of the sides. I'm very curious to taste your pastry cream. It's definitely not as thick as it really needs to be to show the proper pastry cream technique. Mm -hmm. Flavor's there. Mm -hmm. It's bright, it's shiny. I taste that sort of amalgamation of the different citruses and how they play off of the blueberries. Um, and there are a few cracks in the shell. Mm -hmm. But it's delicious. Next up, please, Shelly. What kind of tart do we make? My tart has berries and a classic vanilla pastry cream. This looks like a, a really great tart. Did you glaze the fruit at all? A little bit. Uh, that was Yeah, time. it looks, looks like like three or four little berries here and there got yeah. some of the love, and the yeah. rest are like crying out. Pastry cream's a little loose, but that crust looks good. The uh, tart shell itself, a little under, you can see in the bottom but here on the sides, nice browning. Overall, good job. Oh, thank you. Next up, Christopher, let's go, please. Right, Christopher, describe your tart, please. This is a strawberry, blueberry, mint, and lemon tart. Amazing crunch on the pastry. Talk to me about the actual pastry cream. It looks as though my pastry cream didn't set quite as nice as I would have liked it to. The actual pastry cream. Runny. It does taste good, but it just looks a mess. But I have to say, the shell is incredible. Have you nailed it? No. Thank you. Last up, Hethel, please bring your tart up to the front. Please describe your tart. I have a cardamom vanilla pastry cream, raspberry jam for the glaze. There's a little bit of milk chocolate on the bottom so you don't get a soggy crust. From face value, it's visually just stunning. I'd say the baking is a little blonde. It could have used a little bit more time in the oven to get just a little bit more of that sort of like nice golden brown. Okay. The crust really shrunk down. And because your crust shrunk, yeah. it feels like you have a lot less pastry cream. Okay. Love the flavor. I can taste the cardamom. I wish that there was more tart shells so I had more pastry cream. Yeah. But I definitely see you in this tart, and I feel like I have your voice back again through the food that you're presenting to us, unlike the cattle ranch. OK, thank you. Please, all four of you, come round and stand in front of the bench. Thank you. Tough pressure test. Um, we need a moment right now. Please, give us some time. Thank you. Oh, this is tough. Right. This is tough. Super tough. I mean, everybody Seriously. had high What are we going to do? Oh, God. You did the pastry uneven, uh, undercooked slightly. She had the yeah. most yeah. consistent. She didn't perfect anything, okay. but her flaws were minuscule here mm -hmm. and there. So you see why I hate pressure tests? You see, yeah. you see what I'm talking about? These things? Yeah, they're the worst. I mean, what do you do about that? It was like on the verge of becoming liquid. Yeah, not I don't they were sinking into the pastry cream. So much is on the line now, and the pressure is like, you know, you could cut it with a knife. There wasn't, you know, any, like, major defining mistakes between any of them. We have no choice. Let's go. The judges have a tough decision. I don't really know what's going to happen. It's a really tough pressure test. Fruit tart, very technical, a lot of components. And I have to be honest, none of you got all three of those essential components right to make a perfect fruit tart. Please step forward, Shelly and Hethel. Both of you live to see another day. Please head up to the balcony. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Uh, I got this sinking feeling in my gut, you know? It's just like saying, I don't know if you're going to make it through this one, Stephen. I don't know. 
This, this, this could be it. Christopher and Stephen, this is a very difficult decision for all three of us. It's very rare we come to this T-junction. Um, one second, please. Um, let me see. I don't think I should be standing here. The only con I had was a soupy pastry cream. My crust was the best. It had the best crunch. It was cooked perfectly. My fruit was perfect. My taste was great. I have the least amount of cons. I should be up on the balcony. Okay, uh, Christopher, Stephen, uh, there's no easy way around this. I'm going to cut straight to the chase. Uh, I want you both to take your aprons off. <gasps> Holy. It's too close to call. You're both going up the balcony. <laughs> what? Oh, my God. Get up there before we change our minds. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We're both saved. I'm like, my, my tongue, like, drops to the floor. I'm just like, man, what a day. We've never had a situation in this competition yet that has been that even in terms of highs and lows. That's never happened in this competition. You are the top 10. You all are seriously talented. And every decision from now on in just gets more and more difficult to call. Got me? Yes, yes. yes Chef. Good night. Next time on America's biggest cooking competition. You are going to be serving dinner in the Master Chef restaurant. The top 10 team up to cook family style. What are we feeding Gordon Ramsay's children? Stress? And the MasterChef family falls apart. Chris, that's our dessert. Get him in. Get the chickens in. There's no way that we're going to get anything from the red team. This is ridiculous, man. All ending in the biggest shock of the season. This is one family. <laughs> you do not want to let down. One potato, two potato.